Hello everyone, I'm Mix Berry, and I'll be your substitute teacher. Hey everybody, I caught Tori again. I'm so excited to catch you. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> so you all know Tori. We, we've done a couple, I think a couple of reactions, but we're going to, we decided that we wanted to do a reaction around teachers and this queer teacher thing. And why don't you tell, talk a little bit about why you wanted to do it, Tori? Yeah, I, I want to do it because um, I, I am trans and I was a teacher for six years. Um, I taught elementary education from kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, and I was teaching before I transitioned and I still taught during my transition and then where I am now, essentially. Um, so I have a lot to say on it in the aspect of how I just did my job and existed as the person that I, you know, was and kind of still am, you know, I, I, I just did my job, loved my kids and didn't focus too much on, Hey, I'm trans. Cause they don't need to know that. Thank you for saying that teacher. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's why I feel very lucky to have Tori here today because she has the actual experience of not only being trans, but also being a teacher. And in my feeling, when I see what you guys are all going to see today, I just, I just don't get it. And I don't think it's helping, not only not helping the queer, trans, whatever community, I think it's actually hurting us on so many levels, but also teaching. This is, this has nothing to do with teaching, Tori. No, I mean, no. it's mind blowing. No, I, I don't. I don't know why we've all of a sudden taken this idea of uh, trans ideology and put it in a curriculum. Like me neither. W as as teachers, your job is to love the kid and teach the curriculum and teach them how to be good humans. Now, people would argue being a good human is being inclusive of LGBT, and it's like okay, but. <laughs> There's a difference between being inclusive and shoving it down their throats right. when a lot of adults don't even understand it, let alone these young minds that are still developing. I just, I watch these videos and I'm like, <laughs> what was the age group? What was the age group that you taught? So I taught kinders all the way to fifth grade. So that's what, 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 what age is kindergarten again? Is that five or six? Yep. Five or six. Yeah. All the way up to fifth or sixth grade, which is 10 yeah, or 10 or 11. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's still young people. My son is 11. Like I'm around little teeny kids too, with all over the place. Like what's happening? Why do you think a three and four year old needs to know your, 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 your pronouns or that your uh -huh. mix, mix, whatever. And then <laughs> They and kids are smart. They know what a boy or girl is. Sure. They're, they're, and they will sure. clock you. They will clock you. They will be like, why don't you look like a girl? And it's like, yeah, because uh, I didn't spend as much time this morning, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Like people talk about how like I get they're like, don't you get offended if you get called a man or whatever? And I'm like, no, because literally I worked with kids for like six years where um, they will clock you and they are vicious, <laughs> vicious. Like you're not a man, you're a woman. Yeah. You're not. It's so, like, you know what? That's the reality of it. And stop yeah. trying to gaslight kids into thinking you're actually a man. When you're, you look like a woman, you talk like a woman and you, and all of a sudden now you're telling the kids to call you a man. That's gaslighting kids. It's yep. like, nope, nope. To leave that stuff out of the kid's brain until they're old enough to understand what's going on here. So I don't like it at all. And I won't, I won't tolerate it because it has nothing to do with queer or trans or anything that this just doesn't need to be in the children's space at right. all. Now, when you get into high school, I do think it's important, even maybe middle school, later in middle school to have like a, maybe a, a gay student union or a place where the kids could come together. Right. Yeah. I was going to say G GSAs. Is that yes, yep, that's gay, GSA. gay straight alliance? That's right. That's yeah, right. those have blown up too. Too just, oh, we'll talk we're about that later. But <laughs> we're not gay straight alliance anymore. It's all queer trans. Yes, it's, it's nothing to do with gay or non-binary. So let's do this first one here. Hello, everyone. I'm Mix Berry, and I'll be your substitute teacher. Your name is Mix. Actually, Mix is a gender-neutral title, an alternative to Miss or Mister. I identify as non-binary. So if this was cis female 
and this male, I'd be here. But aren't you born boy or girl? Well, biological birth sex and gender are different. Gender isn't your anatomy, but how you internally feel. It can exist on a spectrum. Ash is gender fluid. What's fluid? Something that isn't fixed, but can change and flow. My gender identity changes by the day, or week, or even hour. Do you want to point to where on the spectrum you feel? Yeah! Sometimes here, sometimes here, sometimes here. <coughs> that is perfectly valid. Everyone is unique and different. Thanks, Thanks Mix Fairy. Okay, that was the creepiest thing I ever saw. Thank That's you. I'm so glad you said that. Because... <laughs> oh, I don't understand. Did is that a teacher? Uh, oh, I, I don't know. They're acting like one, but like they're acting like one. They they look dead. Like their eyes look dead. Like, but what's with the weird little <sighs> accent? And then when they dress like a little kid and then do this whole thing, like, and also that is confusing. I don't know. Yes, but what I no, I don't even know what that what they were saying. It, it was like we were we were applying things like if you're working teaching them a number line and putting gender ideology in it like what wh wh why can't we just be boy or girl and then be more feminine boy or more masculine girl and the fact that this person dressed up as a child that's like i'm gender fluid <laughs> no so buck crazy. buck they <laughs> actually i experienced my own kiddos were like oh that they saw a rainbow flag and they're like oh I'm a member of that. I'm gender fluid. A oh. fifth grader when I'm pansexual. I'm like, how do you know you're 10? How do they know that? What are you experiencing when it comes to your sexuality when you're 10? 10. Wow. That is indoctrination. It's Bull. so scary. Well, none of that should be near a kid. None of that doesn't even need to be discussed. Stereotypes need to be discussed 100%. If you want to be a girl who has short hair and wears a baseball cap, right on, kiddo. But they don't need to be taught that there's 57 different genders. Sure. And that you can change your sex. And, like, it's just no wonder people hate us. I don't know. And, then, and then they go, like, uh, the. so I think when they're dressing up as different, I think they're being the kid. That's right. Um, there That's being right. different kids. And one of them is like, yeah, gender fluid. And then, oh, yeah, my pronouns change day to day, hour to hour, week to It's like, yeah, see, this is, why are you teaching that? Like, everything is completely valid while looking completely dead in the face. Like, no, hello? I, look, I just looked back and it says, I'm a substitute teacher. Oh, we missed that part. But still. I'm a substitute teacher. Yeah, you're a substitute. Don't come into somebody's classroom and start mixing up the kids because you're a substitute, which means you're not going to be there the whole time. So Mix Berry, the substitute teacher, is coming in to teach your kids about non-binary and fluid like nonsense while the teacher's out of the room. Oh, wow. That's Just, scary. I want all these people fired. I know. I'm kidding. I shouldn't they shouldn't be, be near. They shouldn't be allowed to. Yeah, no. Nope. I mean, nope. when they check for jobs, don't shouldn't don't they check like Instagram and like social media and stuff? I mean, I know I got in trouble for that, and I was a teacher, so it's like, right. what about subs? No, I I feel like they just let anyone. I you know I'm around kids all the time. I coach a referee, and they train this kid here. Not not none of them know that I'm trans. None of them. Of course not. Of course not. Uncle Buck or Buck or you know Coach Buck, whatever. That's right. Because why would I do that? Why would you? Why would I? I don't need them to know. Also, people like Tori and I, everybody, we transition to look and be the other sex. So we don't actually want people to know that. That's where we can see a difference between us and them. They're obsessed with their identity. Yeah. Obsessed. And these are adults. These aren't children we're talking about here. I pride myself on being a teacher who's very open about her life. And one of the things I'm very open about is my sexuality. What? I have a trans flag, a bi flag, a non-binary flag, all on my desk at my work. What? But there's one thing I'm not open about, and it's being poly. And today that actually became something I had to worry about for the first time. See, the kids are interviewing us teachers as a part of learning how to write profiles on others. They'll soon be doing it with each other, but they're starting with the teachers so they can all work together on one subject. And one of the kids on Tuesday is going to ask me if I have a partner. And the answer is, yeah. And I have another one, too. 
And I don't know how to handle that conversation because while I know that the kids are more accepting of things like homosexuality, bisexuality, all of that, polyamory is not in the conversation. It's not something that is talked about. And I worry not only would this be something that might lead to rumors that I am cheating on my partner or that I'm a swinger or something like that, but would also just totally derail the class. So the obvious answer, the one that I went to first, is I'm not going to talk about it. But that feels wrong too. What? I don't like lying to my students. It I don't like telling them falsehoods. Like and students? also, I don't feel comfortable oh answering God. the question by saying, yes, I have a partner, and having to pick which one I pick as the face for my relationship. That feels super, super gross, yes, right? So I guess what tentatively I've decided after talking with my co-teachers and my assistant principal is maybe the right way to do it is answer the question honestly. Say, while I don't feel comfortable talking about who I'm in a relationship with in this specific setting, I will say that I am bisexual. I've dated people of many different genders. God, um, and if you're willing, if you're interested to talk about that or my own specific okay, relationship, stop, that you're really, stop. really insistent, let's just not do it in the classroom and setting. And on. It's like they like to hear themselves talk. First off, why do you care about the kids knowing your polyamory? Like, first off, that's actually narcissism at its finest right there. That, why why do we have why do we have to use that word po like because it's trans inclusive i i know but like as kids like i like i as talk kids. like i talked about the one fifth grader that was pansexual like i was like why do you know that that's right because of idiots like that teachers teaching and like how how she goes on to say i feel like i'm lying if i don't talk about it. i have i'm like what? You're talking about kids and the kids who cares when they ask you, do you have a partner? Say yes. And that's it. Nope. Done. You're done. And, and me with, with my transition, my kids watched me and the younger ones were so cute. They started ask, asking questions like, do you have a baby in your tummy now? Okay, great. Which is great. so cute. I'm like, no, I don't. Um, but all the little girls were like, do you have a husband? Like it was great. so cute. And I simply just said, no, I don't. I didn't go, no, but I have uh, been with a woman before and now I'm looking to be with a man. Like, no. No, it's, that's not what they asked also. Like, this person's elaborating on, so it's like, it, I just, when I, I made a, a video the other day, a reaction video with this teacher, and I was just saying, I can't believe how you need to be validated from a three-year-old. That's what I feel I like. Know, I know, that's feel creepy. Like getting this validation from these because this person just kept talking and talking. I know. Talking. Like, okay, we get it. We actually get it. So, like, what are you going to say to the kids? Why don't you just say, I have a partner? And yeah. Go on to yeah. And not even say it's a, a husband or a wife. Just say, I have a partner. And if they ask more questions, then that is your chance to go, I actually do not feel comfortable talking about it. You're going to have to talk to your parents. You bring it back to the parents because it's not your job to parent on that. Oh my God, I would be so mad if he came home with that idea that he could tell us about like, oh yeah, the teacher told me he has three lovers and two. I'm like, what? The teacher told you that? Like, no, private business. Like, why are they bringing their private business to school now? Yeah. Like, how are we let, honestly, I'm going to ask you as a teacher, isn't there like a teacher code or isn't there like an ethics code for teachers that you just keep your personal business out of school? Yeah. Yeah. Well, which is what I was violating when I had my social media. And I'm like, I don't think so because I'm not, not violating. I know. I, I it's to know attacking the wrong things. That's what I'm seeing. I'm like, I could have been doing this. I would never, but I could have been. And like, yeah. This is more concerning to me than if someone does an OnlyFans. I'll be honest with you, because the OnlyFans for sure is private and it's over there. And that person has a different name and no way can the kids. And the kids shouldn't this, find that. Yeah, that is readily is available. Readily available. That's right. That's exactly right. And kids want to sometimes know about their teachers. So they start digging around. They do. And, and fifth and sixth graders can be on TikTok and look for shit and find their teacher on TikTok. Like they were trying to find me on TikTok and I said, I, I don't have a TikTok they and, sure were. and they're like, they sure were. are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> wow. do you have a YouTube? I'm like, yeah, I, I was saying I had a YouTube, yeah. but it was before I transitioned, but yeah. they're like, can we, can we find it? And I said, no, 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 you can't. Right. No. Nope. <laughs> That's all you got to say is no. No. That's all you have to say is no. It's not lying to the kids to not that's disseminate right. information that's not pertinent to why they're there in the first place. 
unbelievable that we're even having that conversation. It's oh. got to reel these weirdo teachers back in because they're, you know, no one wants to go to public school anymore because this is what's in public school system. This was halfway done, Buck, too. We weren't even there. Oh, like oh, that person. <laughs> what? Like someone's bored. And like, where are your polyamorous partners? Why aren't you with your polyamorous partners? I'm, I must make you busy. Clearly, you're not very busy. <laughs> Do you know what? I have one partner and I'm like busy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sure. Do you know what? When you're talking about how they want to be validated by three year olds, it's isn't it just kind of indicative of you I, like I said, the kids will clock you. So maybe they're trying to get validation from the kids that are vicious and stuff. But it's like I never tried to get validation from those kids. If they clocked me, I was like, oh. Better do better on makeup next time or better do switch my outfit or something, not wear that again or not put my hair like that again. But after a while, they didn't care anymore because it didn't matter. I was their teacher. They loved me regardless of my gender identity because I was still the same person that like I had, they had a kindergarten, my kiddos that went all the way up to fifth grade, um, it didn't matter if I changed genders in between because they would recall things that I taught them and bring it up before I transitioned. Like nothing ever happened because I'm the same person that's to those right kids there. on the inside. Brilliant. And that's what kids see. That's why they didn't care because they still love you as that person. Cause you're still that same person. You're just presenting different, but that says everything about you as a teacher. They just sides. They didn't care that you did this thing. They cared about you as a teacher and that they loved you and that they got something from you. And that says everything about you, not only as a human, but also as a teacher, the kids don't care. And you didn't make a big deal out of it. That's no. also why they didn't care. No, just and when you, and when, when they clocked me, I didn't I didn't go. Well, you're a brat. Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. I just kind of laughed. I would, yeah, it's mixed. Mix. Yeah, I, yeah, my pronouns are she, her. Actually, thank you. <laughs> Sit down. My pronouns are she, I her. Know. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sure. Can you imagine how the kid feels like scolding a kid for not doing your pronouns? Oh. Wow, just you're gonna give that kid trauma. Yeah. So then now the kids are getting trauma from school. I'd be pissed as a parent. You walk into your new classroom to meet your teacher and you see me. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? <laughs> first thing that comes to my me. mind is I need to turn around and go back. <laughs> I need to. I, what comes into my mind? It's like I'm leaving with my children. Uh, yeah. You're never going to see me again. What? Did you see all the pins? <laughs> they're obsessed with pens like like all all around is one says love wins one's bobbed burgers one is a paw print that's rainbow is that a furry connotation oh don't get me on the furry thing i am so freaked out by the furry the fact that they have so many rainbows how old is this person that is embarrassing it, this face is just terrifying they like, live for this shit they live for it they're like actually really weird people they are no adult should be acting like this it's like weird to me and no parent no teacher should be able to show up to school like that that they just sit there That's no like, i mean that uh, it's what not. It's, <laughs> it's their agenda how is that not an agenda like how is it not that's right how is it not an you, agenda? Your lanyard is rainbow. You got a uh, bow tie that's rainbow. Glasses. That, I mean, aesthetically, okay, go off. But like, wow. Ew. And why is there such a the con or there's such a the rainbow teacher? There's such a what relationship between the people that look like this, and they're always yes. Uh, what's the word? <laughs> I know exactly. It's true. also they feel very immature to me. They do. They it's kind of scary. They, they do not feel mature at all. How did they become teachers? And they they feel they're all very similar in their energy. Yeah, and, like they're reliving their child, like they're yeah. still children. They haven't grown up. Oh wow, they haven't grown up, and they're Don't teaching die. children. My God! Wow. Wow. Well, this is why we have to do these things because we need to end this. This Okay. This next one, friend, is super important to me. I'm glad you found this one. The flag, the flag one? Yeah. The flag one. Yeah. This actually upsets me and it's going to upset a lot of people. 
this is not okay. This is what I keep talking about. You, you cannot do this. So let's look at it and then we'll talk about it. Okay, ready? Welcome class. So today we welcome in Dylan. All right, we're gonna go ahead and make Dylan feel well working. We're gonna go ahead and do this down. And we're gonna put this up. I will explain in a minute why I am putting this up. All right. Dylan goes by they and them. Okay? So we are gonna start incorporating to make they and them feel special. Okay? Appreciate it. All right. Go ahead, Dylan. Tell us a little bit about ourselves. About yourself. Oh, uh, because, you know, I never really felt like a female, and I never really felt like a male. Like, neither of them really felt right, so I go by they, them, because I feel somewhere that's neither, you know? Yeah. Mm. So then why do you dress like a boy? I think these clothes are pretty androgynous. Uh, my sisters wear these clothes sometimes. Um, so if this is your idea of normal masculinity, that's cool. Um, maybe sometimes I'll feel like wearing a skirt. That's also cool, but that doesn't mean I am a girl or I am a boy. I do go by they, them, yes. So like, um, so you, you're you not a boy or a girl? No. There's too much acting going on. Yeah, okay, stop, stop. But anyway, that's happening. It is. That, but taking the um, American flag, I've seen it actually in a real situation. This must be for teachers maybe to deal with their non-binary students or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe that that's what it's, it's for. So that because the kid who's acting like a non-binary, it feels like an adult. It doesn't. Yeah. Feel like a kid. Yeah. Well, and it's just it's just so it just seems so put on. So it does. What I do want to say to it though is it is happening. And I've experienced it. I've experienced where I've walked into classrooms where the American flag is this big. And the pride flag is huge. Holy crap. Um, and or, or, or I walk into a GSA where there's all these flags everywhere and not an American flag anywhere. That's and it, like one is a nation and the other one is a cult. <laughs> It's like, first off, your tax dollars are paying for these schools and you're going to rip out them. They're teaching kids to hate this country. You they know? really, they really they are. Really are. They really are. And it trickles down into police brutality. And then we get into racism and That's it's right. just, it, it all, That's it right. all comes from just dis disrespecting the country that we live in, that they're getting a lot of. A lot of things out of a comfortable life, a comfortable life. Too comfortable. That's why. They're yeah. Too comfortable. They're just getting everything paid for now. Your insurance can pay for surgeries, but work where you work pays for surgeries. They're so, they're so comfortable, which the problem with that is then it makes you ungrateful. And yeah. it also creates this sort of idea that you can act so entitled and to exactly. say you're a victim. You're not yeah. a victim. None of you are victims. You got so much stuff that I can't even imagine if I had that opportunity when I was your age to transition and do all this. It's like, how dare you act this way? We're going to end here right now, you guys. That Thanks for joining me, Tori. And Thank you. And Tori back. I love doing these with her because it's really great, especially that you were a teacher. So it really gives a different perspective and a real perspective because I could say all what I want, but you're actually a teacher. So right. <laughs> thank God. No, thank you for your time today, Tori. And thanks so much for um, helping sort of get us back onto some kind of normal. <laughs> yeah, whatever that is anymore. But yeah, thank you so much, Buck. I really appreciate the opportunity. Right on. Okay, so we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, everybody. Remember, see me, see you on Wednesdays live. And uh, like this, get it out there. Let's get rid of these weirdo teachers because it's actually disgusting. And yeah. I'll see you guys all on the next one.